kick in. Okay. Good morning, everybody. This is Jake Kleoshko. It's August 14. It's a Monday, uh, the feast of uh, St. Maximilian Kolbe. Uh, read up on St. Maximilian Kolbe, one of the greatest saints of our contemporary times. Uh, he was a prisoner of Auschwitz during the Second World War. Uh, very nice story, very inspiring for all of us, and maybe relevant also to the gospel for today. Um, so let's read up on what the gospel is going to tell us. It's about, uh, it's taken from St. Matthew chapter 17, verses 22 to 27. As Jesus and his disciples were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him, and they will, and he will be raised. And on the third day, uh, he will be raised on the third day. And they were over, overwhelmed with grief. When they came to Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax approached Peter and said, "Does not your teacher pay the temple tax?" "Yes," he said. When he came into the house before he had time to speak, Jesus asked him, What is your opinion, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take tolls or census tax? For their sub from their subjects or from foreigners? When he said, From foreigners, Jesus said to him, Then the subjects are exempt. But, what, but, but that we may not offend them, Go to the sea, drop in a hook, and take the first fish that comes up. Open its mouth, and you will find a coin worth twice the temple tax. Give that to them for me and for you. So here's an interesting story where our Lord, <laughs> our Lord performs a miracle here, right? Make St. Peter go to the sea, cast a hook. And catch a fish and inside the fish the mouth of the fish would be a coin and our Lord tells him go pay that coin to the tax collectors as payment for our taxes both for me and you but um, there's an interesting question that comes before that from whom do the kings of this world uh, exact taxes you know what taxes are right okay it's our uh, contribution uh, to the state or to the country uh, for the upkeep, right, of of uh, of the state and for uh, all the utilities that are of public use, we contribute to that by taking a part of our income and uh, we contribute it to government, so that government can continue to run and do, um, you know, good for the general public, right? And here was Jesus wanting to give us an example of citizenship. Okay? How to be a good citizen okay? by paying his uh, his tax, right? So, but uh, he asks an important question: From whom do the kings of this world collect taxes? Okay? They only collect taxes from their subjects, not from the princes or the princesses. Right? They they are exempt from paying tax. And here, here our Lord. Uh, wants to exemplify the fact that he is exempt okay? because he is not only the king of creation who created everything else he doesn't have to pay taxes to his own father tribute to his own father right uh, he is exempt but in order to show everybody else good example he if if, if even he who was supposed to be exempt from paying tax pays the tax it is because he wants to show us good example. He wants to show that really, as far as being a good citizen is concerned, nobody is exempt. Right? Nobody is exempt. Even the highest authority should be uh, living up to the demands and expectations of good citizenship. Okay? Now, can you tell me? Tell me. Let's let's do a little quiz here of social studies today. By the way, is the beginning of the school year for us, right? So, okay. Now, let's see what you have learned in social studies. Who can tell me what what do you do to become a good citizen? What can you do to show that you are a good citizen of your country? 
What? Scratch your belly? I cannot. Scratch no. your belly. What do you mean? Scratch your belly. What? Give me a good example of uh, what you can do as a citizen. Yeah, paying taxes. We already know that. It's already here. What else, huh? Obey laws. Obey the laws of your country, right? Okay. What else? Okay, you, you do your civic duties like be jury duty, okay? Okay, like jury duty. Don't, don't try to escape and give excuses for not uh, being part of a jury, right? Okay, what else? What else? Huh? Um, conserving resources. Conserving resources, okay? Taking care of the environment, okay? Very good, yeah? Don't litter the streets or, you know save water we have had a big drought in california for uh, several years and we've been asked to help conserve water and we should continue doing that even if we have plenty of rains already that is a civic duty very good yeah what else what about the thing that we do uh, every four years or so uh, of course you don't do it yet but huh vote okay you gotta vote voting uh voting is a civic duty right voting responsibly for your leaders is a civic duty. Hey, what else? Maybe not only voting, but those who are called to public service, to public life, it is to participate uh, in government by by uh, by our uh, you know by by being part of uh, uh, the council or being mayor or uh, serving in one way or another in public life. What else? Any other example you can give? What about what we do? And here's maybe something that other people don't understand. Uh, it's not only about obeying laws, right? Um, civic duty, uh, I mean, obeying laws is one thing. It's a good way to, to show our civic duty, about our citizenship. But it, but it also includes, you know what? Fighting against unjust laws. See? What do we do every morning after Mass? We pray the rosary where? The abortion clinic. And why do we do that? Eh? Why do we do that? Well, right? we pray for the end of abortion because abortion is an unjust law. Eh? And, and that is part of our civic duty. As Catholics, it's part of our civic duty to try and uh, advocate uh, against certain laws that are inhuman or unjust. In our case, uh, we... W we do not always march in the streets to protest these kinds of laws, but what we can do as Catholics is to pray, to pray for the end of these unjust laws, right? What else do we always pray in the rosary? Part of the intentions, end of abortion, and what else? That has to do with civic justice. Okay, we pray for the institution of marriage, right? Because marriage is not only a sacrament of the church, it is also a, a, a civic institution, which is very much in danger. Right? With all of this promotion of gay marriages and all of that kind of stuff. See? That is part of our civic duty. So being a good Catholic, a good Catholic practice is also to pray for our country, to pray for our um, politicians. And we do that many times at church too. Right? And to pray for these laws that uh, need to be changed and need to be reversed and, and to institutionalize uh, good laws for the common good. Right? But there's one other thing, one other thing that many people often forget. And here, this is a good way to emphasize this now that we're beginning the school year. And what is this? Part of good citizenship is to work well. Okay? To carry out our professional work very well, extraordinarily well, is part of our civic duty. Okay? Uh oh, <laughs> because because working well, working well is our way of contributing to the socio-economic welfare and benefit of the rest of the country. If there are no good workers, there will be no good companies and industries that produce goods and services, and therefore we will not be that way. We are not serving the interests of other citizens and in the country in general the economy will be bad it will collapse it's not going to go well right so working well 
working very well, extraordinarily well, putting all the effort and energy that we have been trained for to perform our jobs very well is a civic duty. But for you, who are still students, how will you perform this duty? How, what is your professional undertaking now? Huh? Studying. Okay? Studying. If you are going to be the future leaders of this country, right? You're going to be the future leaders, whether it be in politics or in governance and in, in industry, in business, or you'll be entrepreneurs, whatever God is calling you to do in the future. Being a good student now is an expression of good citizenship. Okay? Because if you study now, you're actually preparing for the roles that you're going to undertake in the future. So I think it's very appropriate that now as we are beginning the school year, let us think about this. We have to be very good students. Eh? We have to be very good students, excel in our studies. Not only so that we will get good grades or we will get a reward after the, you know, the semester's good work or we're going to be uh, getting some uh, um, whatever benefit out of it. it. What is important is we consider that this is our preparation for the future, right? That we are exercising good citizenship if we study very well. Okay? So I hope we are off to a good start with this. Okay? Uh, and uh, tomorrow, by the way, just as a reminder, folks, tomorrow is the Feast of um, the Assumption, right? And it's a holiday of obligation, at least here in the United States, or at least here in our diocese, it is a holiday of obligation. I'd like to think for most parts of the world, so those of you who are listening in other parts of the world, um, uh, tomorrow, August 15, is a holiday of obligation. So I'd like to remind you, it would be a best Catholic practice to go to Mass. And plan your day, plan your day. Uh, like in, here in our parish, there are several Masses from uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, or actually it will start even tonight, at, all the way to evening. There's several Masses. There's really hardly an excuse not to uh, fulfill the uh, holiday uh, obligation of going to Mass. So. Um, I'd like to uh, invite you to plan your day. Plan your day so that you can really uh, make sure you uh, go to Mass tomorrow and honor Our Lady. Share in the, uh, in the honor that the whole church uh, renders Our Lady on her big, big feast of the Assumption. Okay, we're off to Mass. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Till tomorrow. Bye.